Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you might be watching. Scientists tell us that the world is about four and a half billion years old, but not to Microsoft. Microsoft said in terms of Microsoft Excel that the world started on the 1st of January 1900 and the reason that they said that was because it allows us to calculate the number of days between different dates. So here on the 1st of January 1900 where we see how gentlemen were dressed in those particular days to the 10th of June 2016 which is how we dress nowadays. I wish I could afford a dinner suit like that. So what I want to do is to calculate the number of days that have elapsed from the 1st of January 1900 which from Microsoft's point of view is day one. So Excel thinks of this date as a number and that's the key to how we use dates in Microsoft Excel. This day here Excel thinks of this date as a number 42,350. That is the number of days that have elapsed since the 1st of January 1900. And if I look at this cell, all we're doing is deducting the earliest date from the latest date. That is, we are deducting what is in D3 from what is in D13. And I can see in the formula bar that that is exactly what I've typed. Equals D13 minus D3 and the answer is 42,530 days. The number of days have elapsed between those two dates. Excel had to choose a particular starting date so they decided on the 1st of January 1900. In this cell I, if I wanted to calculate the number of whole months that have elapsed then I would simply divide what is in F11 that is D13 minus D3 by 12 to give me the number of months. If I wanted to know the number of years that have elapsed then in this cell I've divided F11 by 365 the number of days in the year. So that gives me the number of whole months that have elapsed. And if we think about it from 1900 to 2016 it's 116 years we're in the sixth month but we haven't completed it yet so it's about a half a year. Good enough for the purposes of this exercise. So remember the 1st of January 1900 is day one. Any date that you type in to another cell and deduct one from the other will give you the number of days. Now if I know the number of days between two dates it means, for example, I can calculate the number of days to my next birthday. So if I enter my next birthday, we'll say the 1st of January 2017, and we enter in this cell today's date, I could either type in there the, uh, the actual date, or in this case I have typed in a formula equal today and open and close a bracket so when I reopen this file tomorrow it will show the 13th of June 2016. If you type a date into that cell then that date remains static and will not change if you save the file and reopen it later. So how long have I got to wait? Well the 1st of January 2017 up there and today's date what I'm going to do in this cell is to say equals A4 there the 1st of January 2017 minus C4 which is that cell and the answer is 203 so I can see that I have to wait that number of days now I've got a little message down here using what is called the IF statement and we'll look at the IF formula in some detail in the next video so remember to subscribe and you'll be automatically notified when the next video is available. But just for the sake of explanation, 
what I typed I said equals if and then I opened a bracket if A8 that is that cell is greater than 100 I guess I just have to wait but if it is less than 100 then I will see a message yes not long to wait so let's say that my date of birth uh, is not the 1st of January 2017 but we'll say is the 31st of August bearing in mind that I'm using the English or Australian dates therefore the day month year and what I see there is 80 days to go and ah yes not long to wait so the formula the if formula is showing me the result if the uh, uh, test if A8 is greater than 100 is false then I'll see that if it was true that is if A8 was greater than 100 then I would have seen as I did previously I guess I just have to wait now let's suppose I want to know how many dates to Christmas what I'll do I'll type in here the 25th of December and how many days to go 196 greater than 100 therefore I guess I just have to wait so that's how I use dates not only for, for calculating how many days to my next birthday or how many days to Christmas but it might be used in a in an engineering project which might have a uh, uh, a finalization date uh, of let's say the 30th of September uh, in 2018 uh, it's a big project we'll say it will tell the engineers how many days they have to complete that particular task so there are many reasons that we use dates in Excel to calculate how many days will elapse between certain dates let's consider now the way in which Excel handles time and here is our friend Stephen Hawking if he knew this that we're going to look at all problems would be solved as it were so I have two sets of information here hours unformatted where I'm going to type in what I believe are minutes 12.30 8.40 and 7.60 and I'm going to add those particular hours by using the sum function that we saw in an earlier video how to do that I simply clicked on the button up here the auto sum button and it added however using a decimal point is not the way to type in hours and minutes I have to use a colon as I do here 12 colon 30 which is actually 12 hours and 30 minutes 8 hours and 40 minutes 7 hours and 50 minutes whereas the hours over here are 12.3 hours not 12 hours and 30 minutes now the answer when I add up by clicking on the auto sum button and see my formula here is 29 hours however to see the correct number of hours by adding them if the number of hours exceed 24 hours then I need to do a little bit of uh, Excel trickery by customizing that particular cell and the way I do that is to in the number group I click the drop arrow and I want to go to more number formats and I want to customize the hours and the minutes and I do that by putting square brackets around the hours as I've done there the reason I show you this is simply this that if I did not have the square brackets around the hours I will get an incorrect result so let's go again so I'll change the format there to general and it says 1.2 followed by a whole load of zeros we'll get rid of uh, quite a few of those and it shows me 1.2 hours an incorrect result so where the number of hours exceeds 24 Excel says 
OK, it's one day plus 1.2 uh, hours, 1 hour and 20 minutes. So what I'm going to do is to click on that cell and go and more number formats and I'll go down to custom and in the hours and minutes here I make sure that there are square brackets around the around the hours, the H for hours. If there are not, type them in and when I click OK I get the right answer. I know it's correct. I know this one is wrong if I was adding up hours and minutes. It's showing me 28 hours 28.3 hours. An incorrect result. This result is correct. So hopefully this will give you an understanding of a very important feature in Excel in that it, it uses dates and times in a particular way and it is most important that we understand how that works because dates and times are very much an intrinsic part of Excel. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.